everyone and welcome to cybernation uncensored masquerade of the mighty a masks the new generation live play i am the presence the gm lore keeper for tonight's session and joined with me here are three of our wonderful heroes as always introduce ourselves before the beginning of the game and the characters that we are playing before we roll into a opening of the issue for tonight so first let's go ahead and start with the wonderful adam ferry hi everyone adam joseph ferry here i uh, am turns heel on all social medias and i'm playing jules gray spark the brain and next coral hi friends my name is coral reefer you can find me on uh, Twitch uh, at Queer Venture Time and on the socials, well, just Twitter, at Q Venture Time, because Q too long. Anyways, I'm playing Galaxia. Uh, she's a really cute girl from outer space. Girl, uh, you know, collection of stardust. What is gender anyways? And uh, she's just really excited to be here. And last but certainly not least, our wonderful tech guru, master of all that is the stream, ELH. Hi, everybody. I'm ELH. Uh, as said, I'm going to be running Tech Tonight, and I will be running an actual Star Trek Adventures game this coming Thursday right here on the channel. Same time, 9 p.m. Definitely encourage you to come check that out. Got a wonderful crew prepared. I think it'll be a great time. Um, you can find me on all the socials at ELHMK1, or if you're on Mastodon, it's ELH at tabletop.social. And, uh, tonight I will be playing a Prism, a, uh, Chris crystalline being that, uh, you know, just kind of looks at how he feels in the moment kind of a thing. And apparently has old music as ringtone, because why not? <laughs> Hit me, baby, one more time. Oh, no, uh, it's what is love tonight. Oh, even better. I was hoping for wham. Uh, Baby, don't <laughs> hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. And <laughs> unfortunately, not with us here tonight, but hopefully will be with us here soon, would be Cynthia Marie, who would be playing Flux, who is currently in a a hangover cubicle for the time being. You can find all of her social media presented right there. Uh, in order to get in contact with her, find her, follow her, be her friend, and encourage her on all the things that she is doing. As always, support your friends, support your allies, and be there for one another. And I am Will, the lore keeper for Arc Light Court, a tabletop role-playing game content creator, creating aficionado across a plethora of systems. Uh, you can find me at Arc Light Court here on Twitch, as well as on Instagram at Arc Light Court. And tonight, we dive into issue three, Masquerade of the Mighty, second star to the right. The cover of issue three shows a familiar galaxy nebulid hand pointing into a night sky to a second star on the right of a moon. A bit of... Uh, Backsplash of blues and cosmic purples, yellows, golds, and greens uh, amongst the night as his hand reaches out. As we turn past the cover page, we come to page one. It's a news report, live feed of a helicopter moving over the top of a forested area just outside of Halcyon City. In the top right corner, you can see Halcyon News, HN, reporting live as several members of the Golden Sentinels are moving through the forested area after a jailbreak at the Gorget Warden. A unnamed villain at this point in time has escaped, and the Golden Sentinels are moving through the forested area, scanning over, trying to recover and find the said escaped villain. Several panels show Sentinel, Sparta, Fracta, Portent, moving between the forested lines, flying over the top 
energies being waved over the trees. Fracta in um in 12 different places all at once, looking over the area, trying to study and find any clues or information. For a brief moment in the live coverage, we see the hero Phantom, a grayed, tattered, hooded cloak with a black under uniform with the hands and disembodied spirits climbing and moving up the armor underneath the cloak for a moment before stepping behind one of the trees within the forest and disappearing. We then show Phantom entering into the lab Sanctorum, speaking with his brother, Silhouette. Warren, if this is actually about father, then we need to act on this immediately. This isn't something that you just call me in on a whim for. As he turns and looks to the three of you. Again, the mask removed out from under the hood. You see an I almost identical twin to Silhouette, the ally who had appeared to you in the last issue. As he looks to the three of you, you see there's a moment of contemplation. Uh, not realizing that there were others around before he quickly identifies the three of you. You were the ones at the masquerade the other night. The ones inducted. The. Uh, Morning. I, no. Apologize for not attending, but congratulations. You want some coffee? Thank you. Yes, we. Melon makes a good cup of coffee. Um. Well, we. Your brother has asked you. Here, <clears throat> I guess. Do you want to tell him yourself? I, look I think it would be better for one of you to explain. As Silhouette seems out of place now. Where before there was that confidence, there was that openness, there was that willing to work together to solve what this problem may be, or even get a better understanding on it. Now, in the face of what appears to be his twin brother, there is a a tail between the legs. As he steps back to look over the uh, live video feed of the nanobots within his own blood with the side-by-side -side playback of your guys' testing on the nanobots the night prior. Well... Um... Uh, Galaxia is just going to, um, like, first things first. It's still morning, right? Yes. All right, great. Yeah. First things first, then Galaxia is just going to, like, kind of walk up, especially now that um, Silhouette is the new one. Um, Phantom, or Phantom is the new one. Is the new one. Um, now that Phantom is kind of, like, they're, they're both kind of just... Eh, I'm going to walk over kind of to the both of them lightly put my hand on their on both of their backs and um I'm going to try to unleash my powers um mm. I've got like the the you know the the pheromone control yes. um also known as like I just like to think of Galaxia as like a vibe master, you know? Vibe master is a, the best way to put that. <laughs> so, yeah, Galaxia, that's what Galaxia is going to try to do. She's just literally trying to make everybody feel at home, make everybody nice and comfortable, because it looks like nobody here is bad. 
We're all on the same team. We're all working for the same shit. So let's try. Um, let's uh, unleash you, your powers. Let's let's do it. Two d six plus freak. Uh that is a fourteen. It's impressive. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everything's cured. Everybody's happy. Every <laughs> we bake a the, cake with happiness and <laughs> rainbows, and we're all just best friends. That 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 is one away from a perfect success, where essentially you take over as the presence in that moment. <laughs> um, so, describe how. Uh, uh, Galaxia's pheromone, her, her vibe mastery is going to bring everyone to an equal playing field. Yeah, so I definitely I want to make sure that like, because like I, I don't really know either of these people and and one of my big, big things with, um, with Galaxia, Galaxia is always aware that like she doesn't want to step on anybody's toes. So definitely like she's going to start by doing like the nice hand on the shoulder thing. And as long as like both of them are, don't like shy away or anything, then she's just going to kind of uh, uh, her, uh, she's going to say, all right, just hold on a second. And she's going to um, give like a nice little, a nice little rub with her fingers. And it's basically going to feel like, an entire back massage like full mm -hmm. hour long good ass massage that happened with in a split second um, okay. um and the, just that kind of energy is going to emanate throughout the room and then she's gonna ask um do y'all take coffee or tea i will say before they answer um Silhouette did have his back turned to his brother who had just shown mm. up when you did that. Um, your initial contact with Silhouette, you can feel through by going to interact with the pheromones of other people with their emotional state, you are aware of their emotional state in that moment. As you came into contact with Silhouette, in that moment of contact, you felt a fear, like a fight or flight response to being touched, not because it was you, but because his brother was in the room. Okay, cool. And then, then the sensation falls over the two of them. Um, Sweet. Phantom turns to Dr. Gray Spark. As an Englishman, I assume that there's tea. Is there like you can see like the shoulders have dropped. There isn't as much of an aggression in the eyes. I assume there's tea. Of course. Do you prefer uh breakfast tea? Um an Earl Grey. Earl Grey. Yes. Of course, had to certainly have that. And I, um, I just, um, Marin, please. Malin moves mm. towards the, uh, one of the many caffeinated beverage dispensing, uh, facilities within the lab. Because an Englishman needs tea at any time in any place. Of course. And coffee is the lifeblood of, everywhere so uh, she... and, and i just turn to, to him and say um cream sugar honey lemon cream two sugars mm -hmm. and um once everything's kind of settled down and spirits are a little calmer i proceed to kind of brief um Phantom on the situation. Um, Phantom does tell you uh, 
he motions towards his brother first. He says, I was a bit abrupt. Uh, didn't realize that there were others here when I was summoned. That is my brother, Warren. So Silhouettes is Warren. Uh-oh, I think on my end, either I'm lagging or Ark just dropped. Uh, no, I, it, it's happening to uh, me too. Okay. Our All presence right. is... Our presence has left us. Looks like our our presence our presence is is frozen. Yeah, which, presence um, has frozen. We'll give them a minute, and don't freak out if the uh, the overlay messes up. Right. But uh, hopefully, we'll get him <laughs> back in here quickly. In the meantime, uh, vote for your favorite uh, K-pop band in the comments below. Oh no, there he is. He's back. He's back. There he is. <laughs> The presence was Galaxia uh, for a second. <laughs> Too much power. Mm. Uh, where was I last heard at? Uh, uh, we, we learned that uh, Silhouette is Warren. Yes. Okay. And Phantom's name is uh, William. Uh, he explains that they... And he uses air quotes for brothers when he goes to explain this. Uh, he continues on to say, do you believe that these nanobots are within my own blood as well? Or is this, am I here to be a control group? Well, um, in a sense, yes. Uh, you are here to be control for what I am hoping is successful experiments, but, uh, we do not know if you have these things within you to begin with. So with your permission and uh, Prism will hold up a just a small hypodermic needle just to take a blood sample. Just to make sure. Pull the glove off of his left hand pulling the uh, like hero armored skin tight under suit to his uniform up, exposing a bare and very pale uh, forearm. Oh, well, finding a vein on you will be very easy. All right, please look that way for just a few moments. Think of something happy. You are ignoring stick now. Okay, you can look again. I also recommend some vitamin D eventually in the future. I need some as well, so... I'll take it into consideration, Doctor. You can get it in pill form. Alternatively, you don't actually milk. need to. Lots of milk. You don't actually need to get into the sun. It's not. <laughs> it's not comfortable. I will say that as much. So, with that, is this as Phantom stares towards his brother? who still has his back turned to him, like still looking over the replaying of your guys, your identification of the central nervous nanobot and the shutting down of the frequency released by it, uh, which resulted in the fireworks display of the nanobots disintegrating, destroying, moving backwards or completely backwards or completely forwards in time. Uh, to where they no longer existed. Silhouette turns around and says, I only said something about father because I knew that would be the only way that you came here. And Phantom pulls the rolled sleeve back down, puts the glove back onto his hand, turns to the three of you, and says, congratulations on your masquerade. I'll be leaving now. Um, a brief moment. We could use possibly your, your help as well. There is a known mercenary on the loose that I was in the middle of investigating. I understand that. Um, do you know where he currently is? If I was still there, 
I might have been able to. Yeah, I, I think the investigate uh, uh, that. Uh, sorry. No, we might be able to help with that. That's the thing is that um, your brother um, might actually be able to help with that. You see, with his, with yours, you and my brother's powers being as similar as they are, um, and with his infection, we might be able to get a signal on where this um, mercenary might be. Uh, we haven't completely... Um, researched anything a, just yet but it's not a guarantee mm. from what you've explained to me there's much testing that needs to be done during the time of your testing he could be getting further away or closer to harming other people and i need to make sure that the latter is avoided at all costs well, then, I'm, not, I'm not entirely disagreeing, but, uh, and I kind of look questioningly at the others. If you would be willing to skip the trial phase, I could attempt something on you directly, and if it works on you, we can try it on your brother. It would skip again, it would skip the trial phase, a lot of experimentation, but there is a potential for good here. And what, 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 what numbers dictate... What numbers dictate success and what numbers dictate the possibility that I will be inert and incapable of helping people, protecting people, or chasing this person? Well, that's actually the best part, is even if the experiment on you fails, you're not the one that's going to be in danger. It will be me. Are you sure you want to do this, Prism? Of course, I'm in a unique position to uh, be offering these services, and I don't want to do it in character because the voice is going to skew it, but basically Prism's going to launch into an explanation of the same way the COVID vaccine works, where it messes with the way the cell views other cells, and I want to do that to, um, obviously, the shadow cells. I feel like we need a name for the shadow cells, but I want to do it to the shadow cells of our lovely control group. And again, if that works, great, we'll do it on silhouette. But if it doesn't work on the control, then I need to figure out something else. How long would that take Coral. me to... <laughs> Go ahead, no. Both Coral and Galaxia right now are both just like... <laughs> uh, oh, Galaxia will, however, will offer up, um, and she is just going to say, I have no idea if it will help, and I honestly don't know what you're doing, but um, uh, Galaxia will roll up her own sleeve and say, but I do know that I have a different composition from everybody else on Earth, and if it'll help, I mean, it's a... I am a resource too, but I'm just going to watch in awe. Well, it's actually a very simple process. Let me uh, perhaps narrow it down. Sorry, I sometimes get into weeds. Basically, I will be injecting Shadow Cell with part of my crystal and changing very slowly via crystal to change the cell's sensing mechanism. If it works, great. It'll attack the nanobots. If it doesn't work, well, then shadows are going to be attacking me. So, fun times ahead. This sounds like an experiment that can be done without me here. Well, that's the thing. If I do it on you and it works, then you're good to go and I can do it on your brother. If I do it on your brother and it doesn't work, well, complications. You have a sample. I do, and yes, I need, but... And I need to stop a bloodthirsty madman. Then... Please indulge us in taking one of these, and I um, call her Malin and um, ask her to give me one of the communications I gave to the rest of the group. All right. Malin goes in and grabs one of the wrist communicators created mm -hmm. by Dr. Grace Park and presents it to Phantom. Phantom takes it, and you watch as the 
the hands and like they're almost like chalked outlines on this Kevlar skin tight like armor. Uh, you watch one of the hands on there reach out from under the cloak and pull the communication device to the armor as it almost like morphs and becomes a part of it. I'll be in contact. I'll be in Good luck. And don't let him bite you. I don't plan on it. He moves back towards the entrance way and steps through an umbral shadow and disappears. For those of you watching now, you see Silhouette's full body relax once he feels his brother has left. If you want I mean, to try it, tough. try it on me. I kind of was hoping I could have full control, not just sample of blood, but uh, hey, you know, got to take risks, got to break a few eggs, yada, yada, yada. Um, if you don't mind me asking, Silhouette, um, the use of the term brother, are you perhaps twins, clones? An extraordinary situation of both. Mm. One of us is the other's shadow. Oh, that's very clever. I like that. Our father did that so that the other had a sacrifice in order to gain his power. These are very twisted webs that are being weaved, and I'm excited to be a part of it, but uh, I need you to look over there. And hopefully when he looks, I just immediately go for his arm and make like a very, very, very fine point and just boop into a shadow cell. <laughs> Give me an unleash your powers. Oh boy. All right. Uh, well, I mean, that's with three. <laughs> so that's a plus three. Oh, we got well, a plus two on our next roll. We're good. Oh, we're good. Oh, Thank we you, chat. We just got a plus two. All right, we're hey, good. Hey, don't monk shit. All right, here we go. Well, that is a nine before the plus two, so it is now an 11. Yay. All righty. Um, don't monk shit. Galaxia or Dr. Grace Spark. I'd like one of you to roll to take a powerful blow for me. And it will be plus two on the roll. It is not for your character. Take a powerful blow? Yes. Okay. Oh, boy. And what was it plus? It is whatever you rolled plus two. Um... 13. 13. Okay. Prism, this is the finest manipulation of your crystalline structure. Because there is a moment of genuine love in a this person does not deserve the feelings that they are feeling the position that they have found themselves in they deserve to be supported they deserve to have people standing at their side at their back they probably needed somebody to protect them and there's a portion of you that identifies with all of that. And so that is why the necessity of getting this right on the first try was so important. And you succeed. It's in this moment that you, as you interact with the shadowed cells, 
within Silhouette's blood. You watch his body buckle very fast as those same horns protruding from his head, that same blackened fire forming between the horns, eyes shot over with shadow, appears and then is almost just as instantly gone as a 19 year old boy's eyes meet yours with both fear and understanding. What are you attempting to do now that you have injected a portion of your crystalline form into these shadowed cells? I want them to view the nanomachines as the same way a white blood cell would attack a virus or anything it would attack with its T cells, I think is what they're called. Um, mm -hmm. How many things do I get to do here? Because I've got a whole list of things I'd love to do, but how many do I get? What was the... Essentially, it's what was the basis of the initial interaction, the, okay. the, the first line of code, essentially. Okay. Got it. Then, yeah, the first line of code would be to modify it so that they view the nanobots and any future nanobots as things to destroy and get rid of. Okay. Um, on the projected uh, video feed of Silhouette's bloodstream, you do start to see a singular obsidian cell starting to tendril out and attempt to dismantle one of the nanobots. There is a... Have you guys seen cells at work? <laughs> best way to explain it. there is a battle happening between these two microscopic cells within the blood the other shadow cells are trying to defend the nanobot but in trying to defend the nanobot are then also becoming crystalline obsidian shadow cells identifying the obsidian one as one of their own replicating they are beginning an attack on the nanobots, at least from what can be seen. This is going to take a long period of time. And currently the side effects of it are unknown, but you do see and are aware that the shadow cells are replicating once coming in contact with the obsidian cell and then fighting against the nanobots. Prism withdraws the hand that was poking, kind of looks at the screen, looks back at Silhouette and goes, Well, I am excited to say that the uh, test result was positive. I probably would say you're going to be here for, I don't know, six hours, eight hours, a week. Who knows at this point? But, um, it worked. And then, and, oh, hold on. Face into chest. Oh. Knees buckling into one another. Oh. Goes limp against your body. Well, that's still is not breathing. Good. I immediately check his vitals. Just... He is still breathing. There is still a pulse. Temperature is slightly low. Not hypothermic, not deep chilled, but it is low. Well, if okay. he is shallow, uh -huh. is that normal? You're muted, Coral. As is I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you have the um, test sample that you could see if this is normal, Doctor Grace Park. Um, but these I'll are check your, that. your current observations. Okay, I um, immediately ask uh, Malum to take him to a, a, a back to a, a bed, um, covering with uh, blankets. Because you said he was cold, right? Yes. Like, how cold? Like, just ice cold to the touch, or is he just, like... His body temperature is reading 93. Mm. Okay. Okay. Then um, I I immediately just try to go to, a like, a heated... A low-heated blanket to try, um, um, to warm him up. Okay. Um, 
I take the sample from uh, uh, from Prism and uh, uh, the sample that uh, they put into um, uh, Silhouette and just immediately just look uh, a little bit closer into a microscope to see what's going on. The small bit that was left on the uh, Prism pinprick procedure. Um, there is a small bit of blood there, which can be analyzed and, and viewed alongside of Phantom's sample that he provided. The sample from Phantom is showing a currently a normal heat signature that could be traced, tracked from a uh, a recently given sample. The portion that you received from Prism in order to better observe what was going on uh, is still much colder. And this just came from the body less than moments beforehand. Okay. How much of your blood did you put in, Prism? A uh, just small fragment. Uh, it was meant to be just a small clipping of my own crystal. I think that's what's going on. It, it was a shock to the system, so naturally the body reacted by getting colder. Um, we'll have to... We'll have to observe him to make sure that's not that's not permanent. Well, this um, is... this, I mean, yes. Well, this is kind of why I wanted a uh, certain phantom to be here, because we could have asked him, is this normal? But now we have no way of knowing. Well, we do. Um, if there's time, I uh, just try to um, tell phantom the results of our uh, of our experiment, first experiment. Um, <clears throat> I have a question, friends. Um, and I mean, granted, I am not a scientist like you two, but also. Would it have made sense to try this on the blood samples that we had before just injecting it straight into him? In a sense, yes. It would have taken several hours to get the result. I was under impression time was a factor here. Yes, but um, I look at, uh, at um, Silhouette and I'm like, but... I don't like seeing this 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 kid like this. Um and uh uh Galaxy is gonna go ahead and actually go over and um kneel down next to him and just be like, hey, what's up? Talk talk to me, what are you feeling? And actually, real he quick, if it's okay, um now that that's been said, can I willingly take the guilty condition? Absolutely. Okay. Then I will do so. Um, Galaxia, as you approach where Silhouette is being laid down in one of the um, uh, one of the spare rooms within the lab sanctorum, um, he is unconscious. He is not shivering, though he does still feel cold. If you were to like rub a finger against his cheek or try to pat at his forehead, he is still cold, um, but is not oh. shivering. Are the warm blankets doing anything to help? Uh, you currently are not there at the moment. This okay. would have been Galaxia right. stepping over to check on him. You're still looking at the the rest of the diagnostic information of yes. the samples at hand. Yes. Galaxia, what is the ringtone on your cellular device? Um... Oh God! Uh, it's it's probably um, it, it's not David Bowie's. 
like ground control to Major Tom, but it's the uh, um, hello, Major Tom. Are you receiving? Turn the thrusters on. It's that one. You know that one? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think Blue Oyster Cult, but I yes. like the Shiny Toy Guns version. <laughs> Your cell phone goes off. <laughs> now. It reminds me of home. <laughs> normally, uh, Galaxia doesn't have to save people's names with their numbers whether this is an absent-minded decision because I know who I give my number to or a I don't remember who I gave my number to so if I don't put a name it's easy for me to ask oh who is this when I answer the phone there is one number that was programmed into this phone when Galaxia received it oh shit and you see Agent Ryuk as the contact name moving across the screen. As Hello Major Tom is the next words of the <laughs> lyrics playing. Uh, she waits until it gets to the point where it's like, coming home. She's like, all right, fine. <laughs> Hi. I was told you were looking for me. Is everything okay? Um. Oh, shit. Now this is Coral forgetting what happened a month ago. Um, but why was I looking for him? Uh, you received a message from Hermit, the former dean of the Society of Sabres. Mm, right. And Ryuk retired before the Society of Sabres was shut down from being essentially a child soldier anti-hero group. And he is the one who might have access to some of the info Ages, that'll help the... us with the... There we go. See, I just, she just needed a little <laughs> bit of a jog. A little bit of a jog. Just reel it in just a little bit. Yeah, just... just... Um, okay, awesome. Um, I'm just gonna be like, um, oh, yeah, um, hi, think thanks for getting getting back to me. Um how much of the of the news have you been keeping up with? Well, I was at your masquerade before things went sideways. Oh yeah, we started getting Duh. people out. Um I know that there is a villain, and you can almost hear his air quotes yeah. as he's talking. There is a villain on the loose that broke out of the Gorget Warden. All right. Um, I'm also aware of your group's interactions with a Vanquish Industries enhanced seeking droid. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, cool. Cool. So what do I need to catch you up on? First things first. Um, you remember the whole thing that happened at the masquerade? Well, turns out... Uh, Nanobots were, were inside of the heroes and inside of the people who had them. And yep, that's what gave yep. them the powers. We looked them at, down. We, we're looking at the nanobots under a microscope right now. And... Okay. We well not right now, but we did, and we zoomed all the way in, and uh, you can note Galaxia is using the most layman's of layman's terms. Okay, he's fully um, prepared for this. He knows how the communication goes between the two of you. Perfect. Um, she's smart, just not like this. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we zoomed all the way, all the way in, and. There was a Vanquish Industries logo on, logo on it. I would have um, passed him. Yeah. But also, here's the really, really, really fucking weird part. The nanobots, none of them were the same. Like They weren't you, stable. They kept moving in different directions along time, but not in place. 
How did you know this? The Golden Sentinels had to receive an emergency surgery from several ages doctors uh, last night. And some observations were made, but they weren't able to get exact readings on the nanobots that were removed because uh, am I on speaker? Um, no, n- no, but honestly, you kind of should be. Um, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm in the other room right now. Um, um, oh, there's so much that's happened this morning. It's been a really busy morning. Um, hold on. Let me go back to the other room. I'm, um, and, uh, I'm just, uh, Hey, uh, 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 Dr. Um, Dr. Prism. Yes. Um, um, I, uh, I, 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 I've just put it on speaker. Um, cause y'all are going to see the name. <laughs> Dr. Gray Spark, it's wonderful to know that you do have access to multiple electron microscopes uh, because unfortunately Aegis's budget has kept their own scientists and people to have access to those things. So I'm glad at least the right people have them. Galaxia is just going to do a silent little. I'm Bro, what budgeting. I've been informed of. Um time dilation but they aren't moving out of place they're they're moving through the time the time scale the timeline while still maintaining their placement in this reality or this world am i correct yes okay the only we... known time manipulator that we are aware of or have been aware of for a number of years uh his name was he was mr tick or tick master tick master he was a a arch villain to agent gemini back during the silver age of heroes so roughly about 50 60 years ago uh none of his descendants that's what mr gemini mentioned him yes in fact i was going to go see two dudes about that and Sorry, I'm interrupting. Carry on. Riz... Prism, correct? A dot, that is correct. James Hammerman, I've followed a bit of your uh, uh, research papers on uh, transmutation and uh, permeation of flesh uh, not too long ago. It's good to hear you're still pushing forward with these things. Well, you know, when uh, life gives you lemonade, you take the, the lemonade and shove it back in their face and say, I don't want your lemonade, and I'm getting off in the weeds again. Um, So, you knowing all this, how do you know all this? I am a former high... There wasn't really a rank system. Uh, highly respected Aegis agent. Um, but upon learning the secrets that even I wasn't allowed in on, I separated myself from them. Oh. Uh, but Tickmaster's, none of his children or grandchildren, a, a, any of the continuation of that uh, genetic interaction with time hasn't been seen, noted, or documented. Uh, there was even a small portion of his uh, equipment that was saved. Uh, it's on display at the Golden Sentinels uh, Coliseum, where your guys' masquerade was held just in case anyone did decide that they were going to interfere with time, we do have something that can offset it by at least a few seconds to possibly stop them if needed. But we, and by we, I mean Aegis, former to me being there, don't have any information as far as time dilation without movement. It's uh, this is something that you you would understand as well, Galaxia. If I travel from the point in time that Earth is at right now, a light year away, and I return back to this exact point in a light year worth of travel, the Earth won't be in this exact same position. The the location won't be the same. It'll be somewhere else, whether even by a few inches, a few micrometers, it'll be different. Mm-hmm. 
from what's observable, or at least what I am ascertaining, Dr. Gray Spark, is there is no shift in placement. They are moving through time exactly in the place that they are moving. So they either simultaneously exist across all time in that exact same point or do not exist in any time except for the moment they are observed. Galaxia puts the phone on the table and goes and makes herself a cup of tea. (laughs) (laughs) When observed... None of the <laughs> none of the the nanobots can be observed by the Aegis scientists currently. Now, if they were to be observed, they might be moving through time as you all, as you have been able to deduce and factor. Without viewing them, how I don't mean to oversimplify if you get a paper cut and you aren't aware that you have the paper cut you have no reason to act or engage in anything different than you normally would but if you are aware of the paper cut you then avoid citric acid you know oranges soaps things of that nature because of the burning sensation Without being aware of it, your body can't identify it. If they aren't observed, they don't exist. They only exist when they are observed. At least this isn't a a, a theory that I have currently. Galaxia returns with with her hot water dunking her tea bag. She's all like, okay, 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 okay. So you're basically saying that like they're they're so frozen that it's like a camouflage to the person's body. So that their blood doesn't attack it? Is that like... No. Galaxia, close your eyes. Is she closing her eyes? She is, yes. Yes. It sounds as if I'm here in the room with you. Because I'm not being observed. But if you open your eyes, I'm not here. I'm being transmitted. I'm being perceived in another way. It's just a theory, obviously. You have uh, articulating particle theory where when we view the moving of atoms, uh, we see them moving in a specific sequence, but when we aren't observing them, they move in a random, uncalculatable uh, 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 friction, distance, uh, 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 separation, when we aren't observing them. But when we are, they're focused, they're linear, they're performing exactly as they should be while observed. Oh, I get it now. And I look at Dr. Grace Park and Prism and I'm just like. Long story short, or perhaps even simpler (laughs) version is um, when we look at them, we see them. When we don't look at them, then they might as well not exist to us observing them. Great. So... One moment, and I um I'll go over to um <laughs> I'll go over to the um kind of test uh tubes of the original samples that I got, mm-hmm. um and I find kind of an isolation room, and I I I'm sure I have some kind of can- I ask Malin who is technically not 
sentient in 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 a way. Mm -hmm. I ask her to stay right there. Um, and when I have this, uh, when I give the signal, uh, focus your camera on their night vision, uh, on on the samples. And I'm gonna go out of the room, keep the lights off. Now, last time I saw them, I saw the nanobots kind of doing their thing at mm -hmm. the random, uh, separate random parts at, uh, at a time. Um, so I'll go outside of the room, turn off the, uh, and as I turn off the light, and I go over to a section uh, of, of the room where I can see uh, through Malin's um, point of view. And um, I turn on the, the camera, um, ask her to look through the microscope without turning on any lights. Uh, I just tell her to turn on the night vision. I would I like you little... to give me an Unleash Your Powers, as this is okay. a complex scientific theory and experiment that you are carrying out. Yes, it is. <laughs> also, real quick, Will, I do want to give you a, a quick shout out. Like, this is something I studied in college, and I'm trying really, really hard not to geek out about it. <laughs> Can you tell that I studied theater? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'll be a f with with my s uh, new superior. Um, is the unleash power? Oh, come on, that's going to be. I rolled a ten, so um, you got a ten. Okay. Yeah, because I, I add my superior, right? Uh, when using the lab equipment or any of your gadgets, yes. Yeah. Alrighty. So, initially, I I believe that Dr. Gray Spark would have Malin have the capability of recording audiovisual observations, things of that nature. When you go to perceive through the video feed from Malin, you are seeing the nanobots. But you see there's a portion of time before you started observing that she was recording. And as you trace back, there are zero nanobots. Zero. Immediately, oh the idea of stimulus activating. Stimulus can be interpreted uh, through just looking at somebody can trigger a response. Most people get the feeling of like heat or warmth on their neck, their head, their arms, somewhere on their body when somebody stares at them long enough. They don't have to make any kind of physical contact, but there is a stimulus. There is something being enacted upon them that their body perceives and then responds to. Without being observed, they do not exist. The idea then begins to spring forward in your head. That's why somebody has to be bitten. That's why they needed to be injected with them to feel some kind of pain is to acknowledge that there is a change there is something different something has happened which allows the nanobots to continue allows them to spread allows them to do what they are designed or set out to do but without any stimulus none whatsoever they do not exist So if they're completely gone, would they turn back on once I go back into that room? As soon as you start viewing the sample, you, Dr. Gray Spark, viewing the sample, they are there. But reviewing the recorded video before you were looking at the video, it's like backtracking through a live stream and getting to the intro where it says nobody is here, nobody's watching. There's nothing there. But as soon as you appear as the one viewer, they are all there. 
Fascinating. There's about two seconds so that there was just nothing. It's all just normal blood samples. Prism, I think I think you I think you had the start of something. Heat would also be kind of a form of observation, wouldn't it? In a sense, I mean, technically, if we want to get into the weeds, it doesn't actually have to be a conscious observer, but uh, yeah, some stimulus uh, would be required to make it observable. Okay. We gotta get those blankets off of off of a uh, silhouette. Um, I immediately uh, go to the, the room we put silhouette in. Um and take the blankets off and um just have them lie down have them lie there have them be still and i just um look even though he's unconscious i try to just subconsciously let him know like okay i'm gonna leave you alone for a little bit and then just see what happens from there because we uh, noticed that um prisms um um, interaction stimulate with... interaction started like trying to attack the nanobots correct yes okay then i uh, go outside and i uh turn off the lights i convert uh, and i actually uh program that particular room to take out all power uh so it looks like it's just an empty room okay okay and i just try Prism to leave it in there your phone goes off, Prism. Oh, hold on, I'm getting call. Either that or Hathaway what? wants to give me a message. What is, uh, well, today's breaking news ringtone is Hit Me Baby One More Time. Um, <laughs> but there's a Hit Me Baby One More Time and then a text message from an unknown number. The numbers are there, like the phone number is there, mm -hmm. but it's not it's not one you recognize, not one you're aware of. Okay. Um, which do you look at first? Well, of course, the unknown number. I got to know if my uh, extended car warranty has come in. You know, that's, that's a very important thing. <laughs> um, Every time. Gosh. <laughs> That's the whole joke. That's the campaign, though. That's the whole premise. It's it's just <laughs> it's just the presence wanting to tell us about the extended car warranty. That's the whole thing. <laughs> um, that's, the, that's, that's what the nanobots do. <laughs> The text message reads, it's hard to not see something you've already seen, isn't it? I text back, I haven't seen you, question mark. Do you click to the news now? Yeah. Breaking news. Golden Age hero has heart attack in mechanic shop. How Please tell me it's you? not too dude. Not too dude. Ah, it's too dude. Sebastian Santana, known as Agent Gemini, is currently under critical condition in Halcyon City Metropolitan Hospital. It is said that he had a heart attack. There are cameras in the hospital pointed into the room where you can see the obviously large feet and extended hospital beds. Seated at the end of the bed, a 14-year-old boy in a gray button-up shirt, short cropped hair, looking directly at the camera. As a member of the staff walks past and then he is no longer there at the end of the bed. So I see all of this. Um, for sake of argument, so I know where everybody is. Uh, Gray Spark, you're still in the other room doing the uh, experiment in the sensory deprivation chamber. Galaxia, we've just been hanging out, question mark? 
Galaxia yeah. still has Agent Ryuk on the phone and has been like catching up essentially. Uh Dr. Gray Spark would have been making his way into that central area at this point to kill power into the observation room where he has moved the other samples into. So you would all roughly be in the same area at this point. Got it. Then, as much as it is a cardinal sin to split the party, Prism is going to suggest, okay, so long story short, I feel like I've said that a bunch today, um, two dudes is in the hospital, I need to go see him, I, I cannot explain, it's just gut feeling, I need to be able to see him and see that he is alright, but we also have problem of, well, we need to go help the Sentinels discover the missing or broken out, uh, individual and oh, there's just so many things we need to do and we cannot be everywhere at once the same tv that had the uh breaking news of the escape from the gorget warden uh with the helicopter coverage that was playing in the lab moves to that footage of agent gemini in the hospital this is last standing golden age hero Wait a second, wait a second. Is it the same footage? Give me an assess the situation. Which I have guilty, which is gonna, you know, that that lovely minus two. Alright, I'm sure it'll be fine. What do we got? Uh yeah, I have a condition. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> oh, <great>. no. Yeah. <laughs> that's a no. Oh no. I did this to myself. This is this is masterful. I know this I was self inflicted. <laughs> Oh, and Ooh, even with impressive. the plus two, we're, we're going to save that plus two. But thank you for the yeah, thank you. For thank, the, the you time. thank you. It, the <laughs> roll was so low, it wouldn't do anything right now. <laughs> no. What you saw was a live stream mm -hmm. of the news broadcasting because you had had the information of the uh, the breaking news from this morning on your phone. So it's like it's been playing in the background on your phone. Mm -hmm. like leaving a video running. So when you clicked over to it, it was still the live broadcast, the live stream of it. This is minutes late. But the camera angle is identical. But there is no one at the end of the bed. Even when the same lab-coded personnel walks past the room, and you can tell it's the exact same person, There was nobody there. So I guess Prism looks to Galaxia and says, Galaxia, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you, did I understand you tell me that uh, you saw a person on the roof very far away when the whole masquerade problem happened? Out of character, yeah. I think he told us. Yeah. She even yeah. did a radical transformation into what she had seen to present it to everyone. Was it yeah, the... really far away, just kind of observing. Well, this is going to sound odd, but I, I think what I just have witnessed is related. And again, I, I feel like we are being pulled in five different directions at once. I mean... You, you think you saw the that figure with Gemini? I saw a figure. Whether or not it's exact same, I cannot say. Are you sure you want to go alone then? Honestly, no. But and you can tell the prism, even though you know he's kind of this crystalline entity. You can see that there's definite like droop of the shoulders, definite sort of hesitation in the voice. And he's like. I, uh, well, I, I already messed up once today, and I don't want to drag anyone else into uh, another one of my no. harebrained schemes. Galaxy, uh, you should uh, go with them, and um, maybe just make sure make sure Jim, um, Mr. Jemai is okay. Um, after hearing what uh, Prism observed, uh, you might want to double check and make sure is completely all right. I mean, heart attack so suddenly after helping us is a little suspect. 
Yeah, and he has the heart power of two dudes, so I would imagine that that would be very difficult. Exactly. So maybe maybe the hospital staff hasn't seen anything yet. Maybe you two can um, take some extra care. Um, Professor Hammerman, you said you saw someone in the hospital. Did you hear Agent Ryuk still on Galaxia's phone? Oh, right. You're still on speaker. Sorry, I, I forgot <laughs> the moment. Um, yes, I saw, and I described the individual that I saw. Observing. Did they say anything else? Well, there was Thrain's text message that insinuated that uh, it's Thrain seeing the same thing again, or something along those lines. Uh, As you read the message... It's hard to unsee what has already been seen, isn't That's the way it? You put it? Yeah. Observational stimulus uh, to be aware of something while others are unaware of it. it. I'm gonna look into something that sounds too on the nose. Agreed. Also, before I go running for, you know, hospital, can I get your number? Can I put it in my phone? You can gather it from uh, Galaxia. Very good. Very I got good. you. Then uh, well, Prism is going to do that thing where he starts moving for the door, but we'll wait for Galaxia. Like, he's not going to just leave her there. Okay. Um... Um, oh. We're, I, I just go into the phone. I'm like, oh, oh, looks like we're leaving like right now. So um, I, I'm going to hang up, okay? <laughs> Have a wonderful day. You too. We'll keep in touch. I'll pass on your number and text me if there's any updates. I'll do the same. Will do. Be safe. Bye. Hangs up. <laughs> Dr. Gray Spark. There is zero activity within all of the samples placed in the dark out room reported by Malin. Okay. Um, I ask her to the, the zero activity in the samples. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, keep an eye on it, on it and um, I'll quickly program lights uh to go back on into that room just out okay. of curiosity you do also have access to silhouettes advanced technology that was left on the table in front of you those pauldrons that had the holographic display and even access to the video feed within his own veins Ooh, ooh. I'll hook that up um, to the screens and see what see what he um, went through. Um, in the moments where he went unconscious and was laid down by Malin while no one else was around, zero nanobot existence within his bloodstream though the shadow cells continued to become obsidian cells while <laughs> interacting with one another it seemed to expedite the process because looking at timestamps and interactions and things of that nature uh when galaxia re-entered the room more than 40 percent of the nanobots had been destroyed dismantled or removed from the bloodstream. When Galaxia left the room, they ceased to exist again. More of the shadowed cells became obsidian cells, continuing this newly generated combative system against it. When Galaxia, or when Prism returned to the room to go and check on him as Galaxia was there, Nanobots appeared less than 45% in population within the bloodstream. How much time between those two? Minutes. 
So it went from above 45% to le under 45%. And then... Within minutes. Oh, excellent. Prism left the room. You guys began conducting the experiments on the other samples. During conversations with Agent Ryuk, all of these things taking place. As you look at the current feed, there is less than 8% nanobot population within the bloodstream while you are observing it. I shut it off one more time and I, I'll wait exactly. I'm going to put on, I'm going to put on, um, because this is making me happy, I'm going to put on some butter. I'm going to put on some BTS butter. This is making me happy. And that's where we'll take our break for this evening. As Prism and Galaxia make their way towards the Halcyon City Metropolitan Hospital to go and check on Agent Gemini, Sebastian Santana, or Two Dude, as he is affectionately known. And Dr. Grace Park continues this unobservable theory that may have resulted in saving someone's life. We'll go ahead and take our break here. Get yourself something to drink. Use the restroom. We should be back in roughly about 10 to 15 minutes. We'll continue on with the story.
one. Welcome back, everyone, to Masquerade of the Mighty here on Cybernation Uncensored, a Masks, a New Generation live play. We are here with our heroes after the revelations, discoveries, interactions, conversations, and a few breaking news updates. We find Prism and Galaxia, leaving the Lab Sanctorum. Yeah. Um awesome. Yeah, we're just gonna um Galaxia's gonna gonna just lead us on to the uh the spaceship and um we're uh she's gonna make sure that like the uh the inside conversation pit is like especially comfy right now. Okay. Um getting the Kirby yeah, craft like, prepared for thorough conversation oh is that what yes. we're calling it now that is the name of the ability for the outsider for their shift is called the kirby craft oh no i meant yeah. the other thing you said oh. the con conversations <laughs> yeah con yeah yes <laughs> i got you here <laughs> um but yeah no um uh galaxia is just gonna go ahead and what? uh float her her ass on over and um just sit in the conversation pit and uh just kind of motion for prism to 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 sit next to her and be like come sit we've, been, we've had a long morning we, we deserve a little <laughs> at least uh, uh our transit can be relaxing you know uh, duh, duh, perhaps you are right and very much a uh, edge of the seat kind of a deal where he does sit down but it's very much he could fall off it at any second kind of a thing he's very tense he's got his arms crossed across his chest and overall he just seems to be tapping his right foot very nervously or anxiously gonna sit up straight and just look you in the eye and be like what's up babe well, uh, starting to question my own judgment, uh, as it is, you know, I, I was very impulsive when I, uh, went and tried to help Silhouette that, uh, I forgot that not everybody is impervious as I am or as you are. I, uh, I feel I've acted rather rashly and very foolishly, but, uh. I can only hope that I haven't doomed the, the poor individual to something worse than what he started at. I mean, I will say I definitely think a little bit of uh, a little bit of patience could have done some good. But I got to say, you know, um, and I'm going to use my uh, best of them uh, ability. Um, and I, I got to say, I've been all over the place you know not the world not the galaxy the universe even beyond sometimes uh rarely but anyways that's another conversation um i've met a lot of different kinds of peoples and i've met some really really rational ones who would have stopped and waited and tested but you know something that i really really appreciate about humans is that y'all don't well earthlings i don't know if you still can however you identify people on this planet is they really understand they, they've got a sense of urgency and a, a, a real profound sense of, of I need to help and I need to help now. And I don't know, Prism, I think that's exactly what you did. You know, I mean, you saw somebody in need and you instinctually really like, like you you knew that you had something that 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 could help and 
Roll to comfort and support using freak instead of mundane. Let's go. Um, there is a plus two up for grabs. Yep. Thank okay. you, Moon. All right. We're... There we go. Boop -a -da -boop. Did it do the thing? Oh, no, I clicked on the wrong thing. <laughs> Oh, okay. What eleven? Eleven. Is that with the plus two from chat or? Nope. It nope. is just with my freak. So we still got one in the chamber. Mm -hmm. Now, prism. Yes. You can mark potential. Mm -hmm. You can clear a condition. Mm -hmm. Or you can allow Galaxia to shift. One of your labels up and one of your labels down. Mm. Isn't there also something we get since it's above 10? Yes, but yep. in order of operations. Got it. Okay. <laughs> um... Can I add a question to that of at what point would Jules possibly contact uh, these two um, reporting my um, findings? About, this would be uh, silhouette. Uh, so, given the time that Jules would have spent uh, looking at these observations, taking notes, and then setting the next experiment, um, they still have a little bit more time before you would have been in contact. Thank like your presence. Then I think Prism's going to hear what Galaxia is saying and is processing it, but. He's not quite ready to let go of the guilt. So if it's okay, I'd like to mark potential here. Absolutely. Now, Galaxia, you can choose to add one point to the team pool, which is currently at two, or clear a condition that you have on yourself. Well, I do not have any conditions, so... We'll add one to the team pool. Yeah. Which... Real quick, can you remind me what that does again? <laughs> you can spend a point from the team pool while engaging a, with a dangerous threat. So in the middle of combat kind of situ uh, situation, outside of combat, you can spend a point from the team pool to give yourself a plus one. For each additional point from the team pool, you increase that plus to a maximum of three. So now with two points in the team pool, uh, Prism, how do you respond? I think he relaxes just a little bit. He doesn't completely let go of his nerves, but he says, you know, I, I think we're right, but uh, it would be very callous of me to just go from one thing to another as much as I joke about being impervious you know the one thing that this whole crystal thing hasn't changed is the fact that uh deep down uh well let's just say i have some very insecurities about myself hmm. oh i understand that but uh here i can at least be giving you this as token of uh, your goodwill and uh i don't know if you want to call call this a roll or anything but He'll make another splinter of crystal, and when he holds up the splinter, it unfolds into a crystalline rose, and he'll hand it over to Galaxia. Oh, No roll needed. Galaxia is just going to take this, and she is speechless. Just, like, completely enamored by it. And also considering like that she controls the ship telepathically you feel the ship kind of like like it gets warmer <laughs> no it doesn't get a little bit warmer she fucks up while driving <laughs> i mean yeah no she does turn up the heat slightly too <laughs> well did we hit a bird or something that was that was very sudden lurch and craft. no no uh I, uh, no, I was, um, you gotta warn me 
when you're going to distract me while I'm driving. <laughs> I feel like there is chance here for pun, but it is not coming to mind. I feel we're <laughs> going to have to crash into it. Oh, no. At that. Oh, no. At that. Galax <laughs> Galaxia. Looking from the conversation pit within the Kirby craft out the observation window at the front portion of the Kirby craft. You see pastel paintings of a barren ice landscape. Crags and mountains formed from celestial debris left by asteroids colliding into a planet's surface. And sitting off the edge of one of these crags, the outline of a person before immediately it's gone. And you see several skyscrapers of Halcyon City vastly approaching the front of the Kirby craft at an exponential speed. What do you do? Uh, I immediately uh, go up. Go up? I'm just going to say, hold on! Give me an unleash your powers, as this is an immediate response. All right. Okay. And if we need it, we still do have that plus two. Yes, we do. Oh my Damn, lord! Damn, her dice are hot that today. Is that wow. While you are flying your ship, you use superior, not freak. Oh, I use superior, not freak. Yes. Oh shit. Well, can we just keep that roll but make it a plus two instead of a plus three? <laughs> Either way, that's amazing. And what was our roll? Um, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Do you want me to re-roll it or no, 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 no? You can keep the roll. Oh, okay. Then it's a 14 instead of a 15. 14. All right. Unsettling was identical to the painting that you saw this morning. Your own painting. That you painted over the person sitting on the edge of that crag. Before making that decision upon seeing the skyscrapers of Halcyon City. And forcing the jet into an immediate 90 degree upward. Those of you inside the ship. Uh, so only Prism. This makes no change to your orientation within whatsoever. Oh. Galaxia, you are aware that I just shot 90 degrees from zero. There's an understanding of your own craft that you made sure that the interior gyroscopically shifted so that none would be affected by it. Nonetheless, unsettling. You are roughly about five minutes from the landing platform above Halcyon City Metropolitan Hospital before you hear a message from Dr. Grace Park. Prism, Galaxia. I, I'm... It took some time, but it looks like it's it's working. I put silhouette in the isolated room and uh, observed all the nanogenes. And after after a couple of minutes, approximately uh, thirty minutes, approximately thirty minutes, they're gone. Gone as in you're not observing them anymore, or gone as in gone, gone? As in gone, gone. That, so, in the in the test samples from uh, the victims from the ma masquerade, they are technically there. Um, especially the one that is uh, labeled with, uh, that was basically man-made. But as far as um, silhouette, when you inject... Um, put your blood or your sample with his for a little bit and you noticed the obsidian um, things turning into obsidian cells and fighting back the uh, uh, nanobots they fought back once we put them in that isolated room and sh I showed up all the power there 
they're gone. Actually, did, did I notice after they were all gone? Um, is he still unconscious? He is still unconscious and going and observing what is currently within him right now. Um, there is 5%, but it has stayed at 5% from this point forward. Okay. Now, well, I said completely gone, but right now they're at, at 5%. But the the obs- um, obsidian from your um, cells and his, and his shadow power... They're they're putting up a heck of a fight. They're on, they're basically fighting a winning winning battle and has basically suppressed the nanobots. So, in a way, then what you're telling me is that I didn't screw up, at least not completely. No, you didn't screw up at all. If anything, you found a, this is a great breakthrough through. Prism, this is excellent work. I suppose when all this is said and done, I can be writing paper about how I created an independent observer at the nanoscale, but um, thank you, uh, Dr. Graysmark. That uh, that makes me feel a little little bit better. Thank you. Oh, good. Now, all we need to do is figure out how to bring this to the rest of the um, uh, to the rest of this world virus and completely... (laughs) establish it as a nut and that was going to be my next question how do we make this go from working on people with shadow blood to people working to working on people with normal blood well i am that is what i'm going to start working on next um i need to i'm going to look more at um silhouette's equipment here and research more onto his actual power and because, as you recall, it was all his his shadow powers were already fighting um, the nanobots. So maybe it had something to do with his shadow powers fooling the nanobots into thinking nothing was happening and they wouldn't be observed, and basically causing them to go into a constant fluctuation of existence and non-existence. I know that doesn't make sense, but um, actually, no, I'm following. Yes. It's 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 I have to research more of this particular power. Um, I'll relay this message over to um, Phantom, and hopefully that'll convince him to maybe donate more of his his power or explain more of his powers uh, in full when there is time. And hopefully they have a hold of this bloodhound um, person as well. But I just wanted to tell you excellent work and. Um, Hopefully he's still unconscious, uh, but he is stable and he's he's resting. Is he still cold? He is still cold. But like how cold at this point? Like just still at 93 or? Still at 93. And ho- it's, right now his, his temperature is still at 93, but hopefully that is the only side effect. And it's hopefully, and, and I do, I do expect it to be temporary. Um, but that was a, just a quick update. Um, and I just wanted to congratulate you on this that brilliant spark of, of genius. I I never would have even thought of that. Um, but uh, there you go. <laughs> I'll let you more. I'll let you know more once I've um, researched um, Silhouette's power. All right. Good luck to oh, you. Oh, d- d- yes. before you go, before you go. Um, uh, uh, first things first. Make sure he's taken well, taken care of. Um, but then also after he's um, good to go and uh, Malin is taking care of him, um, I'm thinking maybe just came to mind. Um, well, ooh, maybe you want to uh, send Phantom a quick message asking if it's normal for y'all for them to get cold. Um, that might be a good idea. Just something quick for him to respond to while he's working. But then um, second. After we're done at the hospital, I think it might be a good idea, unless something else smacks us in the face today, uh, I think it might be a good idea for us to see if um, Phantom and Friends need any help. And especially if they're worried about people, I ju- I've got a nice big uh, spacecraft here uh, that, that we love to use to transport folks. 
And uh, yeah, that might be a good idea for us to help. And, uh, you know, scratch their back. We scr- They scratched ours. We scratched theirs. That whole thing. Absolutely. I agree. In fact, hopefully I, there's one more question I need to have answered, and that's how Silhouette was actually able to get a frequency of uh, the other victims or even the other nanobots um, around the world through his through his powers. Um, I intend to do that within the next couple of minutes. Uh, might take a little bit longer, of course, because I do not know, understand this particular uh person's biology um we'll keep in touch great work everyone good luck yay click <laughs> as the kirby craft lands on top of the halcyon city metropolitan hospital dr ray spark the phone call ends and there's a portion of your mind that directs you towards Flux's containment. The whole observation window the night prior had been covered with post-it notes from Galaxia with kind and inspiring and heartfelt words. But you've gotten zero detection of movement from within that room. Save for while you were in the call, just as it ended. There are no cameras set up inside there as you allow Flux her privacy to these very vulnerable moments of having to extend this energy from her body in order to keep others safe. Even the observation window has a self-tinting and shutter ability from inside. I um, I asked Malon to make uh, well, I, I have lovingly called the, fl- the flux special. Um, whatever her favorite, uh, whatever flux's favorite uh, meal would be, and uh, I just. Uh, go up. I turn off. I can. I I turn off the power again in um, Silhouette's room. Um, but um, if it stays like that for at least another, I'm gonna say another one hour. I'm just gonna make sure this thing's gone. So one more hour. If uh, it's still at five percent, um, then I'll assume that it's still stable and not doing any damage. And I might and probably try to warm him up from there. Um. But for the time being, I'm going to just check in on Flux and make sure her is that she's all fully recovered herself. And um, yeah. As Malin enters the containment space, Malin alerts you that there is one other person within the containment space. I'm sorry? There's another within the containment space. Flux is still asleep. Yes, but there's one other? Yes. Okay. Um, Can you identify them? Zero of the defense protocols within the lab sanctorum have been activated. An absolute zero. And Malin is not an observer. I carefully look around. Do you step into the containment space? Because she met you as you were coming back from checking on Silhouette. Okay. Do I notice anything slightly different with Malin? Again, okay. You know her coding, her programming, her being down to Um, the most finite detail, and there is no change. She has not identified a threat. She has not identified 
a a viable how do I word this? The person she observed in the room, one did not pose a threat. Two did not interact with her coding being extension of herself in any way, shape, or form. Do I and... know anyone from my group? Besides my group, I guess, that would be able to have that ability to uh, no. over... She was not overwritten. And she was not overwritten. Okay. Your mind moves to a recently stated idea. While it is not observed, it does not exist. While it is observed, it exists. You are reporting observations of something. And flux had not been observed in the last few hours. I turn on all the lights and I turn on all the lights in that room. Do you step in? I do. As all of the lights within the containment room turn on. <clears throat> As you step in, there is a 14-year-old boy sitting at the end of the bed space that Flux is resting on. Just looking at all of the notes writings that were left on the post-it notes that covered the window, the observation window. Why would no. you want to see? Some people appreciate the privacy. The privacy. But you leave conversation. You leave things to be responded to. Sometimes t things take a while to respond to. But we're always here to respond. And she needs to. She'll be fine. I know she will. She might be better if you went in there with her. Some people need their space. The boy looks at you. Blue-gray eyes. Very soft skin. A 14-year-old boy. Short-cropped brown hair. A gray uniform. No other really identifiable markings. Do I even remotely recognize him from possibly from the masquerade? Y even partially from when I was hanging out with all those kids? He fits the anatomical and vague appearance of what Galaxia had shown to you from the person across. Mm-hmm. Why become a hero? Why do you feel that you must be seen in order to do the right thing? It's not about being seen to do the right thing. It's just simply about the doing the right thing. Then why not just do it? Why the costumes... Why the masks? Why the desire to be noticed? With some, it's easier to play a character. 
Are some they care? feel more free. Aren't we all? Some. Not all. What do you see yourself as? Should probably put that fire out. Do you turn yeah. and look in the direction he pointed? Um, would I sense a fire at first or do you turn in okay. the direction he pointed? Shoot. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. God damn it. As you turn <laughs> and look back, he is not there. I suppose a magician. You hear the chamber signal that there is still more than 35% of the unsiphoned energy within the room, that it is not safe for you, Dr. Grace Park, to be within. Last time you read the power readings on the room, they were at 38%, and that was last night. Time has been stopped unobserved in this chamber since the windows the observation window was covered with the post-it notes now you appreciate your privacy Lux but I think it's best that I leave Maladin here with you for now have some eyes in this room Flux and is I, still asleep. The I, room notified you of that. Yeah, I would fully be aware that if even if Flux was asleep, I'd still say that. Um, and um, I will before I exit the room, I'll just quit do a quick uh, uh thing with Malin. Make sure um just protect Flux, <laughs> and um keep your eyes uh. Keep, Keep your eyes open too, and for the the recording device, even if it's if, if it doesn't uh, pose as a threat, I want to know anything that comes that comes in and out of here of this particular room. Thank you, Mandia. We move to Galaxia and Prism. Quick question before we do: <laughs> Was there a fire? Was there a fire? Yes, there was. There's a small fire. Phantom didn't grab his mask before he left. Ooh. And it was set on one of the work tables where an open burner was warm from heating a kettle and set the mask on fire. A coincidence, maybe, possibly. It's hard to tell in this moment. Last thing on his mind. <laughs> Look, I mean, of course, of course, this... he's putting that fire out. But yeah, <laughs> with this kid running around, I'm not accusing anybody of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Prism and Galaxia, you make your way into Halcyon City Metropolitan Hospital from the top floor presenting yourselves as the newly inducted heroes of the masquerade given access within explaining that you are here in order to check on agent Gemini, Sebastian Santana, affectionately known as two dude. <laughs> Get in. Uh, the nurse looking over uh, tells you that we're aware that his heart beats strong enough to supply blood for two people that his kidneys process enzymes and things of that nature as though for two people his lung capacity is that of two people we don't know what caused the heart attack so you don't think it was a drug you don't think it was stress you just don't know if it was stress, it's hard to tell. 
because his heart is essentially working for two people simultaneously. He's any heavy lifting will put his heart under stress. Any ex running for an exorbitant period of time will put his heart under stress, but not only will it put it under stress, but it will put it under two times the stress, especially in his age. He shouldn't be working on cars. He should be enjoying sitting on the couch, watching TV, entertaining his grandchildren and great grandchildren. He's still a he, he's healthy, is what I'm saying. But that's not an excuse in his age to carry on as he is. And have you told him this yourself, or is that our job? I'm an ER physician. I'm not as his regular physician this is just an observation that i'm making from what was provided to us by the golden sentinels uh, medical staff from aegis on his enhanced capabilities and physiology in order to better treat him uh it's just my observation as a doctor is he yeah. conscious right now or is he resting He's he's conscious now. He came to consciousness about three, four minutes ago. Uh, he said something. Uh, the nurse didn't quite hear him and just sat up. Can we see him? Absolutely. And the, the doctor kind of just ushers towards the room that he's within. Yeah, I go quick. <clears throat> if he sat up and immediately, yep. I'm going quick. So real quick before we do run in, are the camera people still there? Um, no. Uh, from what you can assume, once he was awake and okay, mm -hmm. don't need to report on it anymore kind of thing. Gotcha. Okay. Carry on. But as the two of you enter the room, <laughs> you see two of the uh like articulating hospital like beds where the you can raise the back drop the feet side by side yeah center divider mm -hmm. dropped with like a row of pillows in between it to kind of make up for the distance between them uh he's got a tv remote in one hand you can see there's an iv on the top of his right hand <clears throat> he's in a hospital gown uh but all in all, appears okay. He's kind of flipping hey, but... through channels. <laughs> Buddy! Star I know it's not Star Lady. I know it's not Star Lady. It's No, you're on the right track, though. It's like right there. Right? Think about it. Solar system, universe... Galaxana. It's so close, Galaxia. It's so good to see. Uh, I knew it was there. I knew it was there. <laughs> kind of smiles. You can see there's a bit of a flushing to it. His face um, <clears throat> looks over towards Prism and the hero of the night last night. <clears throat> We're supposed to have a Coke and a story, but I guess we can have any like motions to a water cup next to him. I would uh I would very much like to hear a story, but uh, are you okay? Do you feel all right? Yeah, I was uh you know, I was taking the front end off of, you know, an old Buick Skylark and next thing I knew, I was in an ambulance. Mm. And then I think Prism is going to look at Galaxia and it's one of those looks that says, do we repeat what we were told when we came in here? No? Okay. Well, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe it was just some bit of weather. Maybe you were pushing yourself a little hard today. Who knows? You know, doctors, they, they, they never know these things. I might have slipped and fell back. Yeah, I could have, you know, really dinged myself in the head with the bumper. 
You know, it could have been a it could have been a lot of things. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, yeah, dude. I mean, how long have you been doing this? Mechanic work. Uh well. Let's see. When did the Volkswagen come over here? It's like 44. Almost 80 years now. Yeah. It's just I mean, everything fits together. Everything's supposed to they everything works together, everything lines up together. It's like how people should be with other people. You, you don't have to know everything about somebody to know that you should just be a good person to them. You just do your thing. You be the person that you are. And that, like, gears do that. Bolts do that. They just fit into place. Everybody just fits together. It'd be great if everybody was more like cars. Dude, I've never been a car person, but after that metaphor, I think I'm becoming one. (laughs) Gives a gives a little laugh uh looks over at a prism and says so it uh i know you were asking about tick uh you know when i'm not in here we could go into the the coliseum and i could show you like they have they have his old like belt in there that he would use to like go back and forth, you know, a couple of seconds. I mean, if you really want to check that out. And there's a... There's... Roll to pierce the mask, both of you. Actually, it was giving me my question as I was curious what he was... uh... Oh, yeah, I still have guilty. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> no 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 oh god yeah not you have the two least mundane motherfuckers <laughs> here right now um no. we do have a plus two though mm-hmm. so i am going to use uh, the plus two so what ha- happened was i've been keeping up with chat we got a plus two and then a, a minus two, two and then and another, another plus, plus two, two. <laughs> I'm going to hold have, on to that uh, minus we my, two. We have my friends <laughs> Claritha and Crescent battling it out right now. Um, I'm going to hold so, on to that minus two. So you're free to use both of those plus twos if necessary. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Let's see. Uh, we're going to, I'm just going to get me to a seven. Okay. So, yeah. Prism? <laughs> That's a three. <laughs> no. Oh, but hey, no. I get to mark potential. So yeah. absolutely mark yeah. potential. Um, Galaxia. Well, first we'll start with Prism, actually. Okay. Um this is a hero. Not even in the super sense, not in the mask wearing cape flittering protect the city this is a hero this is somebody that you this is somebody that children should learn from this is someone adults should listen to this is someone the world should appreciate is still here And that keeps you from really noticing because you're in that thought is going through your mind as he's explaining these things. What you wouldn't have given to have somebody like this a part of your life before the accident. Galaxia. As he appears to be thinking back to a memory, 
uh, reliving a moment. It's almost like there's a pause. Not out of fear, not out of anger, not out of like being lost in a thought. But like something's missing from that thought. You have one question you can ask. Can I ask one that's not under one of yes. the things? Yes. Um, I'm just going to ask him what's on your mind. There's somebody missing, but I don't know who. And I feel like they're important, but I would remember somebody that's important. Like I have 32 grandchildren. I have 19 great grandchildren. I have eight children. I've been married four times. I can tell you every single one of their names. I could tell you all of their birthdays. But there's somebody. There's somebody missing. And I don't know who. Hold on, hold on one one, one moment. Uh, and Prism would again using their transmutable body will try to approximate the uh interloper as i'm gonna call him yeah he looks i mean i could be wrong but it looks a little like that is it the same person that i showed y'all to the interloper yeah yeah Galaxia will will also do the same thing and be like, yeah, I I I, I saw him too. Yeah, but like, I mean, no offense to either one of you, but were either of you alive in 1964? Well, depending how you mm. feel about quantum theory, maybe, but uh... at least you have the conscious understanding of being. I think I said that right. Not on Earth. Um, but also, we're dealing with a lot of funky time stuff. Remember, we're, we were dealing with the Tikataka guy? Yeah, but Tick's been dead for years. I, I was his ball bearer. Yeah, but, uh, but that's the thing. We're not necessarily dealing with Tick, but but you said somebody's missing and it's this person. Who is this? I don't know. But you recognize them, right? Kind of. Were they? I mean, it's, it's hard. It's like, it's like when you see somebody in a dream. And you've never met them before, but you, they're exactly how they looked in your dream and you feel like you've known them your whole life or their whole life I don't know hold on a second so add a character um, would it be possible for me to replicate the voice that the interloper used when he spoke to me the interloper didn't speak. He sent you a text message. Oh, that's right. Well, yeah, because I'm trying to think if there's any time we've heard him speak and it's not coming to mind. Well, no, the I guess Grace Park. The only person who's heard him speak there's is Grace one Park. person yep. who's heard him speak right now. And, and we they don't are know not with us. Yeah, we don't know that. Yep. Carry on. It's... I mean... Like, I know you, Galaxia, like, I know you, 
and I only just met you last night. And I can I can remember. I know this. This is a fact. The hero dragon right here. Prism. He helped me last night. We saved those people. I know this. Who you are, I feel like I known them, but I don't know who they are. Well, whoever they are, they keep showing up at the rather fortunate timing. Which is actually kind of ironic if you think about the current events. But anyway. Uh, well, on that note, did you feel them at all when you had this accident? You ever have the hairs on the back of your neck stand up as he's talking to a crystalline dragon and a being made of stardust? Yes. <laughs> Once before the accident, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, In a different... Yeah, I understand the feeling. Go on. <laughs> like somebody's like breathing on you. Uh-huh. How well versed with hospital equipment is Galaxia? Not. Prism, there is the beginnings of spikes on the echocardiogram. Oh, uh, no. Uh, no, no, no. Not, ex no, no. not extremely rapid. He's not throwing but, tombstones, right? But more so than the standard heart rate of two people combined in one person. Okay. As long as he's not throwing tombstones, because then we'd have a bigger problem on our hands. Yeah, no. Um, like if, if it's like there was a ghost but I can't I can't and they're picking up so real quick before I try to calm him down can I observe the room in all its detail. Give me an assess the situation. And I'm still guilty. This is going to go lovely. All right. Uh, well, I mean, if I use the plus, do we still have a plus two? Do we still have one? Still have a plus two. We have I a could plus get, two. I could get an eight here if I use that plus two. I'm going to do it. I think, I think this is worth all it. All right. Yeah. Um, at that plus two, observing the room, uh, you will still get your question after this observation. Okay. You do not see the person that you believe they're describing mm -hmm. and the full observation of the room. But you do hear Malin report to the three of you through the communications that there was someone in Flux's containment space. Yeah. Dr. Gray Spark, this coincides with Malin alerting you of this information. Okay. This would be when you then stepped into the containment room and met this young boy. Prism, what question do you have? Would it be possible through Malin to hear what is said in that room? Yes. So then, if I understand correctly, I now have heard the interloper's voice. Yes. Then... 
again, With before I try to calm yes. Gemini, I think I'm going to replicate the voice, what I've heard. See if that triggers anything. Galaxia, I need you to roll to take a powerful blow. Man, I'm just good at knocking out heroes. You know, forget villains. Let's just, you know, plus, send Prism to do it. With plus two on the roll. Because Agent Gemini is afraid. And he feels hopeless at the moment. That is an Eight. That is an eight. Okay. Prism, as you began replicating the now referred to interloper's voice to Agent Gemini, the tombstones begin. Just before they do, there is a moment of recognition. And as he goes to speak, the second heart attack begins. <laughs> Cutting him off. The alerts go off on the echocardiogram. Uh, the doctor who you had spoken to outside comes in with a crash cart with three other people coming in to repace his heart as they ask the two of you to step out. And it's at this time, Dr. Gray Spark, you would have finished your conversation with the interloper. Um, after I... Um, put, uh, put up the actual fire. Um, it's fine, Overstar. <laughs> He's fine. Uh, I know. I'm I, like, I, no, please, no. no. He's fine. No. Shut up. <laughs> we can't have killed two, dude. <laughs> um, as soon as I put out the fire, I step out and uh, leaving uh, um, Malin in there. Um. Probably with no no doubt as to uh, um, that the rest of the group kind of heard that, but I do kind of try to contact them and immediately just fill them out, uh, fill them in on what just happened, just to make sure um, if anyone, if Galaxy or even um, Prism are able to respond. Um, I give them a, a play by play of exactly what happened, um, at least from my view. Um, and uh, I decide to kind of just turn on all the security cameras and just try to look around and see if he's anywhere else. I'm guessing I'm gonna I'm guessing he's not, but he's uh, but I, I want to just check anyway. I'm actually gonna check. Actually, no, I'm gonna check near um a uh, silhouette. Now, I said I was gonna try and shut keep that shut down for an hour, but after. Yep near flux i gotta i gotta check my other patient give me and assess the situation um that's a 10 a 10 yeah all righty um what two questions do you have Um, going into, going in the silhouettes room, um, is there any difference in time past, I guess? In time uh, has, past? Like, yeah. like, uh, like, well, like the equivalent of like when, um, when I went to the last containment uh, room with Flux, I noticed that time went slowly in there. Was it kind of the same situation going into, um, so, um, silhouettes room. No, it appears almost quite the opposite. That I went faster in here, 
as the bite mark scars that were on the left side of Silhouette, where he had been punctured by Bloodhound. All but the one where the small observation disc was placed over are completely healed. There is no scar tissue, nothing. It's as if it never happened. Okay. He's still asleep, resting, still at the same temperature. Okay. And my second question would be Has he aged? <laughs> no. Okay. There is a beginning portion that you are attributing now that you believe the the crystallization of the shadowed cells, the combination of prisms, enhanced capabilities, has created some kind of regenerative property within Silhouette that you believe might be a further enhancement on Prism's own capability. He might now have some kind of regenerative capability for himself. Now I'm wondering if that would also affect um, the overall all physiology of, of Silhouette. None that is observable. Okay. Um, and and all the nanomotes are at this point are gone in his system, or is it still at five percent? It has been maintained at five percent. Your current theory may not be forefront theory, but current theory is that observational disk that he's using is observing. Therefore, is it's it... maintaining some semblance of Sense the of... nanobots there. Okay. That and that it's the disc right here. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a like a EKG diode. Do I know if? Do I know enough about him that if I remove that, would it be a danger to his body? Looking over it with your understanding of advanced robotics and uh, uh, medical equipment, things of that nature, this seems to be just a more advanced uh, capillary viewing camera. Oh. It's a like diode sticker with a small needle on the end and the bit of the glass with the mercurial moving shadows underneath is acting as a camera through his shadowed powers. He's maintaining a conscious connection, viewing into his own bloodstream through that piece. But if you remove it, small alcohol swab, swab band-aid, it'll be fine. I'm sure he's he'll know how to put that back in. At the risk of doing it without his permission, I'll, I'll attempt to take that out and you just are get that last, fully capable. Yeah. Just get that last 5% out of the way. Awesome. You remove the capillary viewing. This is advanced. I'll um <laughs> like yeah. Is there any uh, is there any actual recording on it? Or is it or did I already see that? That's what you were observing. That was everything what I was observing, viewed right? on his mobile supercomputer essentially okay yeah and uh, i'll just take since that's what it was i'll take that off swap so swap give it a nice little um if i have k-pop band-aids i will use k-pop band-aids <laughs> yeah i'm sure they exist i'm sure they exist <laughs> absolutely um do you return the piece to the mobile supercomputer. 
after after a couple of minutes i um to be sure mm-hmm. uh then i would you know what no i'll wait till he wakes up I, i'll okay. wait until he warms up and he wakes up to do anything else okay um returning back to the central lab area i i will just... uh, yeah, I want, want, after after a while, and I'm sure everything's okay. I'll start putting blanks, blankets around him to start warming him up. Him up. Okay. Um, as you return back to the observation area that you guys have set up, um, you do see now there is no video feed on the screen, but you do see a collection of data, like the observations that were made while this capillary camera was on him Mm -hmm. is there and segmented all the way down and just as your initial theory of the maintained five percent was as long as this thing had been observed they were all there and because they were there and weren't seen as a like a bacterial infection or a virus or anything they just suddenly existed in there the body assumed that this is a natural thing that we produce that is supposed to be here and hence why the shadowed cells were protecting it it didn't view it as a threat it didn't oh. view it as a as a infection I believe that it has and always will be here. Therefore, it is something we made and something we must protect. Got you. Okay. And it's as the observation became less and less and the introduction of the new crystalline regenerative genes from PRISM, those numbers began to dwindle. Okay. Okay. Um, with that, um, I'm going to just put more research into if I have any kind of vial of, of his, his blood outside of his body. Yes, I'll just you do. kind of observe all of that do more research with that and prisms. See if I can find a way to expand upon it and safely turn it into a vaccine. <laughs> The vial you have of Silhouette's blood prior to the interaction with Prism, there are no nanobots within. Mm -hmm. This is prior to. Yes. Um, They are gone. Oh, the ones that were in there already are gone because they were not observed. And since they no longer exist in the place they were supposed to be, they no longer exist at all. Okay. So would I need those nanobots to turn this into some kind of vac- vaccine? No, so I, I think... Give me a Unleash Your Power. Uh, with uh, Superior or, or Freak? Uh, we will use Prism's Freak score. What is your score for Freak Prism? A three. So plus three to your roll. Eleven. Eleven. Double fours. In combination with how the shadowed cells responded is almost identical to how white blood cells would respond to an infection or virus. To take a portion of Prism's regenerative crystalline structure and introduce it into white blood cells, they would then, with the fact that Prism is aware that these things are not supposed to be in here, allow the white blood cells the capability to weaponize against the nanobots and start destroying them. In falls theory problem does the white blood cells observing the existence of the nanobots allow them to continue to exist because now they are aware of them or by destroying them 
does that cease their existence as well? You have a variation of both answers from what has happened with Silhouette. So it's possible, but until you are 100% certain about what does a observable mean to these nanobots, that will then give you the best answer. I need to see this. I need to see more results. Yes. There's only there's one a, other. <laughs> there's only uh, one other one you have in the in I know. the lab sanctuary right now. There is. Uh, Prism okay. and Galaxia. The doctor returns out of the room. He's okay, but I, again, stress on his heart is the stress of two hearts. Maybe we let him, let him rest and relax for the amount of time it would take two people to do so. Yes, I, uh, <clears throat> we're sorry for uh, putting him under this. We're just trying to get some information. Hopefully it'll be able to help him in the long run. I hope so too. But he needs rest. I'm not certain on a dosage of medication to give somebody whose body works like two people so i will be consulting with aegis physicians here in the near future if you have any other questions about what may be going on with them i would recommend speaking with them well uh thank you for all of your help and um we have a take good care of our big in. boy we have a helicopter coming in as well, if you can have the oh, ship. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh come on, let's go prison. We we need to we need to move the car. <laughs> and I think deliberately Prism has been very, very quiet. Like you almost have to grab his hand and pull him along. Like he's still kind of frozen in shock that it happened. Yeah, I'll definitely go ahead and do that. Just kind of usher him out lead him out a hand on the back as you guys get to the roof get to the kirby craft and begin taking off the helicopter going to land at the top of halcyon city metropolitan hospital zooms in as the panel moves towards the side of the helicopter as it lands. Doors swing open. We see Sparta and Sentinel inside the helicopter holding Phantom and carrying him into the hospital. A massive bite mark over his chest and shoulder area. What did I tell you not to do? And what did you do? Literally, the one thing. <laughs> As the panel zooms in closer and closer, we see these nanobots moving but we also see the shadowed cells within Phantom's body starting to become obsidian cells and fighting back against the nanobots. And a small gray box at the very bottom says, curious. Very curious. As we close the back cover of issue three, 
second star to the right of Masquerade of the Mighty, a mask, a new generation live play here on Cyber Nation Uncensored. We still don't know what the star reference is. God damn it. Fuck. <laughs> Do you want to know? Do you really yes, want to know? I'll give you the chance right now. What the kid is from somewhere else? There's a, a boy who was shown at 14 years old in 1940 who is still appears the exact same way right now. Yeah. Spectre and Silhouette are the same person but had their shadow taken away from them that became the identical twin of them. Peter Pan is 14 years old. I thought so. And has his shadow severed from him. (laughs) It's... He's a fan. He is a... (laughs) So does this mean we need a... Do we need a crocodile with a clock in it? Is is this how we? It was mainly it was a reference to silhouette and phantom, especially because Galaxia was so vehement on we need to get silhouette to be on our team. We need him to join us. He definitely needs to be around. So it was a reference to the shadow being separated from the boy. One is mischievous. One isn't kind of thing but it started tying into other aspects of this as well i'm just trying to make friends okay. <laughs> also no real quick Novastar, i didn't try to kill two dude i was building dramatic tension i just i went a little too far with prism as you could tell he's the old man <sighs> so once again <laughs> My name is Will. I am the presence here for Masquerade of the Mighty. A mask is a new generation live play here on Cybernation Uncensored. You can find me at Arclight Court on Twitch and Instagram. We will go around our wonderful crew, ask our closing questions, get that deep breath out. Again, you've been heroes for, well, legal heroes for <laughs> 48 hours. Registered. <laughs> <laughs> So we will start with Prism. Mm. So yeah, that that was a thing. Um, do we want to do mm. social stuff and then the question or the question first? Uh, we'll do question first and then the social stuff. Okay. So let me get to these. Does your character feel that they have grown closer to the team more in their own image or away from the team i think away from the team simply because there is that still element of guilt and now a little bit of anger that again their impulse caused harm to someone he admires um yeah i think i'm gonna stick with away from the team in this aspect Alrighty, you will you now have to remove influence over you from one of your team members. Who would it like to remove it from? Um, it looks like, unless I have it noted incorrectly, um, looks like I have influence over Gray Spark and Galaxia, and then the only other person I have written down is Flux has it over me. Do I have that marked incorrectly? No, you have it marked correctly. So okay. you would have to remove... The influence that Flux has over you away. Okay. Now, that is my one option, so that is what will happen. All righty. Socials, where we can find you, what you got coming up. So, uh, yeah, I'm ELHMK1 and all the socials. Um, as I said earlier in the evening, we have a new Star Trek game appearing on Cybernation Uncensored here. Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Should be a good game. Uh, got a great crew for, for that. And uh, overall, looking forward to bringing a little Star Trek flair to the channel. 
Um, other than that, um, speaking of Star Trek, is I'm starting a brand new on my own channel uh, next Tuesday, which uh, if you're familiar with Discovery, if you're familiar with the uh, the Spore Drive and all that lovely techno babble, definitely tune in because uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. But yeah, that's, uh, that's all for me. All righty. Next up, Galaxia. Have you Hi. grown closer to the team in your own image of yourself or away from the team? Um, I think this this time around, I definitely grew closer to the team. I was relying on them for a lot of stuff. There was a lot of stuff in this um section that I did not understand. And I was relying on their expertise for a lot of stuff. So I am almost certain that everyone has influence with you. Um, So you can clear a condition or mark potential. I'm going to mark potential because I don't have any conditions. Awesome. Let's go ahead and get socials and what you got coming up. Hi, friends. My name's Coral. Uh, Coral Reefer. I smoke weed. You can find me on uh, my what? You can find me smoking weed on my channel um, at Queer Venture Time on Twitch. We do lots of uh, stupid gay bullshit. That is the uh, the, the the thing. Um, we play games that we can pause. Right now, I'm super obsessed with Crusader Kings three. Um, I just started a new a new campaign in Jerusalem and we are about to get our ass handed to us by 500 million campaigns or uh, crusades. Uh, and we're okay with that. <laughs> Alrighty. And Dr. Jules Grace Park. Um, I think I got a little bit closer to the group Um, this time around. I, there's a lot I, that, could not have been done without them, uh, without, I mean, specifically uh, Prism, uh, from uh, Jules' opinion. Um, he started the whole thing that got the a possible treatment uh, going um, that uh, Jules can possibly, hopefully, find a way to copy and bring it out to people. Um, it helps that he's a shadow that, um, you know, Phantom's the shadow of a uh, silhouette, and uh, as we heard, the uh, nanobots are already being fought off. Kind of, yeah. So, I do believe Galaxia is the only person who does not have influence over you. Would you like to give them influence? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. And he was a good uh, part of of everything that happened today at, on this adventure as well. Bring and you get to clear a condition or mark potential. No conditions. I will mark a potential. Oh, actually, I already have it that I have influence over Jules. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. That was from the end you know of what? the last one. You know what? That's true. That's true. Everybody's got influence on everybody. We all hey, just hey, love hey. each other so much. <laughs> and socials, what you got coming up? Okay, well, all social media. You can find me as Adam Turns Heel. Boom, me, I am the heel. Um, and you can also find me on our friends at the Initiative Order. On January 28th, we will finish the Vossen game, Verge of the Azure Sea. Um, it's a fun, dark game where I just do fun, dark things by while my character, at least, gets drunker and drunker and more paranoid as we go along. It's a lot of fun. Um, also, you can find me on my uh, Twitch channel. Also, as, as you know, Adam Turns Heel. I am currently playing the Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Miles Edgeworth, Electric Buckaloo. And we're just solving a bunch of lovely mysteries. So come join me when you can. Wonderful. 
And I, once again, am the Presence, the Lore Keeper, Game Master here for Masquerade of the Mighty, Masks and New Generation live play here at Cybernation Uncensored. You can find me at Arclight Court here on Twitch and on Instagram. I am collecting a wonderful amount of tabletop role-playing games, making custom content for all and many. I'm glad that you were here. I remember that on Tuesdays, we wear masks. Have a good night. Cyber Nation on